Okay, today I will show you how to make this 3D inflated text effect and make it interactive and put it on your website. We're gonna do this using these four apps. So we'll have our 2D text and turn it into a 3D element with Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna quickly run it through Blender to simplify the geometry and that will make the performance way better. You can skip the Blender step if you're not that uh, comfortable using Blender, but I'm, I tried to keep it simple here. Then uh, we're gonna set up the 3D scene in Spline and also make that interactive before we then just paste it into Webflow. So let's start in Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna just put our text in here. And before we apply the 3D effect, I like uh, to choose the font. And here I'm gonna use the Gluten font because it already looks a bit like it's supposed to be inflated. This font is a free Google font, so you can just go uh, on Google Fonts and download it. And we're gonna change the color. In the top, we're gonna click Effect, at 3D and Material, and Inflate, and that will apply the 3D uh, inflate effect. If we click the middle to drag around, we'll see that it's not inflated on the back. So let's click Inflate both sides. And I also like to uh, set the depth to zero just to get it a bit more round and soft. And that's actually it from Adobe Illustrator. Now we have our 3D model. So we need to export this as a 3D file. When we click this element, we can go to the asset export panel. If you don't have that, you can go to window and then enable it up here. Click the single plus to make an export element. I'm gonna call this inflated text and then choose GLTF for the format. Export this in your folder and save it on your computer. Then we're gonna go into Blender and make a new project. And of course, we're gonna delete the default cube. In the top, we're gonna click File, Import, and GLTF2. Then navigate to the folder where we just saved the file and import that. It may be super tiny at first, so we can scale it up if we click S on the keyboard, type 10 with the numbers and just hit enter. Then uh, we can see a bit more of what we're doing. And it looks really nice at, uh, out of the box, but uh, if we go up here into the viewport overlays and enable statistics, we'll see that we have 106,000 triangles. And that's quite a lot. I want to get this at least below 30,000. So I'm just going to select one of the letters, go over here on the right to the modifiers panel and add a decimate modifier. And here we can decrease this, which will also decrease the face count. Uh, so you're probably going to experiment a bit with this. I find that 0 0.15 works nice for this example. You'll see that it still looks pretty good. Um, but now it has way less um, geometry. To apply this to all of the letters, we can select them and make sure that the letter we applied the modifier to is has this yellow outline instead of the orange. We're going to click Command L and then copy modifiers. That will apply the same modifier to all of the letters and we'll see the scene now is on around 16,000 triangles. So that's it in Blender. We're going to export this file as an FBX. On the right here, we want to click Mesh. So we only export the mesh. And in the Geometry tab, we want to make sure that Apply Modifiers is enabled. Then we're just going to export this. Then we're going to head into Spline. And in here, we're going to create a new project as well. And we have the default plane, which we can also delete. From our folder, we can um, get the file that we just saved and drag it into Spline. And that will put our 3D text in here. The first thing I want to do is ungroup this and just delete the group element. Then I'm going to go through each of the letters and group them. This way, I make sure that the anchor point for each letter is in the center, and that will just make it a bit easier for me to place them. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the material. I'm going to click these four dots to make a new defined material. And then let's just make it look a bit nicer. 
Okay, so now we need to make this scene uh, interactive. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to simulation and enable physics. I'm also going to set the gravity to zero because I don't want the letters to be falling down. They should just be floating around. And after that, I want to apply the drag and drop interaction to our letters. So I just click any of the letters, go to events and choose a drag and drop event. And we also want to apply this to all of the groups so we can add this here. If we play the scene now, and we can drag the letters, but they're still not interacting. So we also need to just select all of the letters and go to the physics panel over here and click dynamic. So now all the letters will be interacting with each other and bumping into each other. But very quickly, they'll also disappear from view and fly into the void. If we want to avoid that, let's uh, see if we can trap the letters inside of a cube. So we make a cube and drag while holding shift to, um, to keep it cube shaped. Uh, I like lowering the opacity of the color so I can see where the cube is and where the letters are. If we use the widget on the bottom to, to go to the front view, it's a bit easier to place the letters in mid the middle of the cube. We can also go to top view to see and align the cube so the letters are neatly centered in here. Okay, but we also need a camera to make this work. So I'm going to go to front view and I'm going to add a camera in the top. And I'm going to position it so it looks uh, right at the letters. I'm also going to change this camera to a perspective camera and I'm going to move it inside of the box here. And we can see in the bottom uh, left corner that uh, when we move the camera inside of the box, we'll look through this cube so it won't be obscuring the view, which is exactly what we want. Let's just move it a bit to the side here so the letters can fit. And we can make the field of view a bit bigger just to make it in a bit easier to fit all of the letters. Okay, so when we click play now, we have the letters and they are no longer flying into the void as much. They're just bouncing a bit around in the side of this box. But if we drag not on the letter, we can still orbit around. So that's something I don't want in my scene. So in the export settings and play settings, we can disable orbit, pan and zoom. And when we export the scene later, we can also disable the background color just to make it uh, blend more with the rest of the content on our page. So now when we preview it, I can't drag to change the view, but I can still drag and drop the letters. To get the scene into Webflow, we go to export and click viewer mode. And here we wait for it to create a link, which we just copy. So inside of Webflow, we will use QuickFind to add a spline scene. And here we'll paste the link for our spline scene. And that's pretty much it. We can set the ratio if we want to make sure that it scales nicely. And we can click preview and see our new scene. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it. How you go from a 2D text to a 3D interactive scene with Illustrator, Blender, Spline and Webflow. I'm gonna link uh, down below for the clonable for this project and also for the Spline scene and the fonts I've used. <laughs> Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you in the next one.